than uh, Malcolm Tan. But Tan, only 71 fights, was a very accomplished amateur. National Golden Gloves champ. Ariola warned about a low blow, and it was low. Robert Bird, the referee, caught it clearly. Tan with his back to us right now will try to spin off the ropes and do some damage that way. At least he's fighting off the ropes and not simply backing up. But again, Ariola continues to violate his space. Constantly. One thing I like about Ariola, he comes straight in here, hands up. But he throws to the body. There you he know, goes. He chop him down to the chop down to the body and then come up to the head. Smart. But when you're getting nailed to the body, uh, Tan was standing there. Now he's battling back a little bit. Instead of soaking up shots like that, here we go. Here comes Tan on the move. Stop! Break! As he's pulling Let's himself go. slowly into this fight. Scheduled for eight. And again, both were on the card, both were in condition to fight, but they didn't think they were fighting each other until the injury to Devin Vargas this past weekend put Tan in in place of Vargas for Areola. So adjustments to be made on the fly. Big right hand from Areola, and he cracks Tan with another one. All right, you can see why Areola is a fan-friendly fighter. He's aggressive, he throws a lot of shots, and when he comes in, he leads with his jab, and he punches to the body as Chris said. Oh, and now this is with Tan. He's got his macho up. He wants to rumble. He He's holding on, and he gets quick. Yeah, Chris Areola makes the fight. I mean, he wins rounds by throwing a lot of punches, and he's doing great. It's fabulous, up. fabulous second round here as both guys get it going and a little stare down, and here comes Malcolm Tan. Probably got the worst of that, but he's in the fight. Yes, sir. No, no. Okay, now you got two rounds to get warmed up, but I can't let you get warmed up no more. Okay. Okay, you ready? You gonna get in the ballpark? Let's go. Are we gonna get in the fight? Mm -hmm. Actually, All from right. round two, very simply, Chris Ariel is making that Malcolm Tan fight. Tan has to fight back or just keep getting hit. You see that Tan's gonna turn it up himself a little bit just to have self-defense. Tan doesn't look comfortable, Chris, does he? Not at all. I mean, that pressure is, is just too much for him. So he should be spinning, turning, and restarting and trying to get break his momentum somehow. Huh? Trying to keep it in the middle of the ring. And that's where Tan is right now, anyway. Ariola will be pressing forward. Short little right hand is Ariola. You know, he was a wide puncher. We both saw it on the tapes. We've seen him before, Ariola, but. He has really shortened and straightened up nicely, so if he continues to sharpshoot as well, Tan is in a boatload of a fight here against the very determined Chris Ariola, who is absolutely making this fight. And Ariola is just oozing confidence. He did the body language, you know, you could see it. There's some good body shots from uh, Malcolm Tan. Boy, Chuck McGregor in the corner. He's about the calmest trainer I've ever listened to. Telling Tan, you want to get into this fight now? It might be a good idea. No, oh, and on the outside, on the way out, Tan got cracked with a combination. Is he in trouble? He's in a lot of trouble. I'm, I'm telling you, the pressure of Chris Ariola is just too much. I don't think Malcolm Tan really expected this. Should he be holding a, a, a little bit? Or it's early. He's still got two minutes in this round. He's got to start fighting, huh? Yeah. He need to hold a little bit. You know, get in close, hold, regather his thoughts, and just try to box. I mean, he. He's not doing anything but getting hit. Punch it, get out, punch it, get out. Hands free. Another combination, and Ariola just plowing his way forward behind a jab, right hand, follow up hook. There's the right. Absolutely down the middle for Ariola as he continues to be in close, get close, and stay close on Tan. Tan gets cracked with. Little short roll hooks, but doubling up is there. He always getting so many free shots. Tan just not fighting back. He's making Malcolm Tan fight his fight. I mean, the pressure, he's, he's making it short. Malcolm should be boxing. Should try to get back in the middle of the ring, use that long jab, and try to set the right hand up. But he's trading with him. He, he tends to just stand right there and get hit by, with big punches. What should he be doing now? He shouldn't be there, should he? He should spin out and try to make get it back in the middle of the ring and use the jab. Short little punches from Tan as they in fight. Two way action. It is two way action. Tan Let's might win Let's the battle but lose the war because that's not where he needs to be. Not at all. And keep in mind, Tan's been down three different fights. And Chris Ariola 
never down. Well, Tan has gotten Ariola's attention, certainly, but he hasn't gotten him to take one step back. Ariola waiting to catch and then counter. Yeah, he took some on the um, elbows and tries to move forward. Now Tan trying to muscle Ariola and Ariola off the ropes. Stop, guys. Stop, I think it's going to boil down to a conditioning fight. They throw in so many punches. And I think Chris Ariola is the type that loves to bring the pressure, throw a lot of punches, big punches, and level one, a dog fight. And that's what it's turned out to be. It really is. Highly entertaining as we hit the end of the third. Hey, I just took your best shit. Man, you ain't talking, baby. Hey, you hear that? Tan just said I took your best stuff. <laughs> Tan touting Ariola. See action from round three. Ariola just smothering Tan. The funny thing about this round, you'll see Malcolm Tan landing more shots than he did in the first two rounds. And really, it was because he had to. He had no choice. He's being forced to fight. The third round was probably the closest of the first three rounds. I still gave it to Ariola. Effective aggressiveness is exactly what you're seeing from Chris Ariola. Why do guys talk trash, Chris? Hey, they talk the trash guy back it up. And I think that motivates Malcolm Tan now. And look at him, he's coming out throwing a lot of punches. He's ready to go to war too. So he got a wake up call there and said to Ariola, I took your best stuff. Now I'm coming at you. And Ariola sinks a right to the ribs. Ah, they Let's muscle him stop. close. Stop. Break. And Nick, one point that we definitely should make, you know, or reiterate anyway, is that Chris Ariola was originally scheduled to fight Devin Vargas, the uh, former Olympian. Tan came in as a sub. Give Chris Ariola a lot of credit for taking an opponent like Malcolm Tan as a substitute. Absolutely, yeah. He talked about the problems, any adjustment when five days notice would be for a fighter when you train for another guy. But, yeah, Tan's a dangerous proposition, no doubt. He is dangerous, but Ariola's a fighter. He care less. He's coming straight ahead. He don't care who he's fighting. And he feels he's going to wear anybody he's fighting out. And, again, stamina has been an issue for both men. Tan has weighed less, as Steve pointed out, than he has in, well, in some recent fights. Oh, right up the middle, right hand from Tan. And Ariola obviously felt that. Oh, and here comes Tan going to work on the body. Ariola waiting to return fire. What a slugfest this is. He throws skills out of the window. They're going right at it. This is a heavyweight fight. The fans love it. A little hook from Ariola. Middle of the ring and Tan, but he's doing very little boxing. And Chris, as you said, it's all about power shots here. They're throwing huge shots. I still don't understand why Malcolm just don't use his jab. If he's going to throw big shots, at least try to set it up with the jab. He's getting sucked into it. A little bit of a macho war, huh? Well, Ariola short with those. It's a great fight. It sure is. It's really good. I think fatigue setting in a little bit more on Malcolm Tan. Right. He just got hit with a combination, as you said, that Chris. And there he tries to keep Ariola off him with that left hybrid hook uppercut. Short little shot from Tan, Stop. so he is still given. Let's go. Oh, that follow-up left. So you keep your hands moving, you catch him on the third shot. Yeah, he can keep his hands moving. I mean, uh, Tan's a little tired, but I think the toughness is keeping him up and, and willing to, to trade with uh, Chris Ariola. You do get the impression watching Ariola that he's going to be able to do this, apply the pressure, and let shots go all eight rounds. I mean, that, that's a given. And that's not always a given with heavyweights, because sometimes if they're not in great shape, they poop out. But this is his style. Come straight ahead, test the heart of the guy he's fighting. And he's surely testing Malcolm Tan's heart. Closing out the fourth, and this one is zipping by. There has been no downtime in this heavyweight fight. Tan almost over the ropes. Wants a piece of Ariola after the bell. Wow. <laughs> great fight. Tan's legs that. didn't look great there. Hey, how you feel? Talk to me. 
You don't have to try to knock him out with every punch. Let your punches set your punches up, right? Start putting some combinations together. You're very nice, but I want you to take the lead a little more, okay? All right? Keep digging just as where you are. Keep jabbing. Same story, at least as far as how the fight is being fought in round four here. Malcolm Tan on the ropes. An interesting point here. Those ropes are very loose, and if you're going to fight on the, uh, against the ropes like Tan is, you can lean way back, especially when you're a heavyweight. Lean way back. It's actually a de defensive advantage. You can make your opponent miss. These ropes are very loose. Shorten your punches. Okay, let's go. Shorten your punches. Can you expound on that, Chris, in terms of obviously, if you shorten your punches, you got to be inside to be doing that. You got to so be inside. He wants them there. Yeah, I mean, his, his power shots on the inside. I feel that, you know, Malcolm Tan should be on the outside. Chris Ariel is coming straight to him every round, so he needs a box.